Welcome back, everybody. Rudy with Alpha Investments, and today we're gonna we're gonna change it up a little. Uh, I took everyone's feedback of talking about the card shop, and I like to evolve the series a little bit. At this point in time, we're gonna make a few changes, and that is uh, everybody likes seeing the items in the store. Everybody likes seeing product come and go. Everybody says the fan mail stuff's fine. Don't ever do it because it gets boring. But people said the number one thing people were commenting on is Rudy. You've been slacking off on showing, talking about the numbers and the margins and. So I want to swing back around, and we're going to adjust it a little bit, because when enough people start pointing, hey, Rudy, what about A, B, and C, and I'm not doing it, that means uh, I'm missing the mark, so we're going to evolve a little bit, because obviously it is what it is. So first things first. So I've got the place for a couple months now. Things, for the most part, are pretty, I don't know, what do you guys think? For the most part, pretty settled in. I mean, I'm never going to be fully done, because I'm not running a typical nine to five type of business model. I'm not running a typical, I guess for a card shop, most card shops open 11 or 12 o'clock, you know, around noon, and they usually close around midnight or 10 p.m. The average card store usually is like 11 a.m. to like 11 p.m. type thing. <laughs> so, for me, and of course, I have, it's funny because a lot of you guys figure it out. Uh, usually when I do my filming, it's like seven, eight in the morning. I'm half asleep looking. So that's why there's usually no one here and I don't get disturbed, there's not a lot of noise. That's when I like to film. So again, you are correct. Usually I do my filming in the card store in the morning. Now, next thing. As you can see, with the amount of product that tends to come and go, there's never really going to be... There's always going to be piles of boxes. There's always going to be things coming and going. That's just going to be a normal thing when you deal with multiple product lines. When you deal with, for example, the Cornerstone Magic, and of course, some people argue Pokemon's a new Cornerstone. When you deal with Magic and Pokemon as your primary items you sell, and now you kind of go into a side of maybe Force of Will or Final Fantasy or Buddy Fight or Card, whatever you want to venture into. That's, you know, that's up to the individual owner. But this is what we need to kind of break into. For me, I am a very fortunate individual because I'm located in Florida. I don't have the overhead that a lot of you guys in California or New York or a lot of larger cities or a lot of main staple locations may be incurring. The average rent for bigger cities seems to be something like you know, my size type of unit, which is, you know, I consider decent size for a card store, pretty normal. I think I'm around like 15 to 1600 square feet. I think it's pretty normal for a card store. I think some I've heard are as little as 600 square feet and some are as much as like 5, 10, 20,000 square feet when they expand. For me, to recap what my plan was originally, um, this card store was a pretty much was to solve a couple different things. Uh, the three main components I wanted to solve by opening this location was number one, an expansion to store product, inventory, or as a lot of you say, well, Rudy's location is just an expansion of his warehouse and distribution model. That does have truth to it to an extent. Um, the second part that my, this location is solving is I was lacking a good outlet that didn't have a lot of employees and didn't have a lot of foot traffic for buying and selling collections. And that, that's where most stores and larger scale operations in this industry make their money is they buy and sell collections. So I wanted a good, safe, non-high volume location with a low overhead to set that kind of thing up. So moving forward, to give you guys an idea, based on the current setup, I've been very happy in the last 30 days with the way this location has been doing. For example, right now, I think I've been you know, I have appointments. Usually it's like three nights a week, I think it is. I'm, I'm buying collections and meeting customers or clients or people here. Sometimes a family and they just say, Rudy, can I send an appointment to meet you at, you know, 6 p.m. or 3 in the afternoon on A, B, and C day? I'd like to buy a ton of Pokemon stuff at a really cheap wholesale type of price. Let's talk. If you're interested in buying a lot and you want a super cheap, literally almost distribu distribution or distributor pricing, like if you want a large... Pokemon EX or GX basic box. What Walmart sells them for 20 plus tax. You know, I have people who meet me here and they'll say, Rudy, I want to buy, you know, 30 of those boxes, maybe like five of each or something. And instead of paying 20 plus tax at Walmart or $18 on eBay, you know, I'll sell them to them for like $13, you know, if they buy a bunch. Stuff like that because I don't have to ship it and it's easier and quick and logistically for me. So that's one way I make a lot of my money. Number two, when I buy and sell collections, that is the main... I'm going to break the chair. It's kind of squeaky. I feel like I'm going to fall backwards on camera. Everyone's going to be like, oh my God. All right, we're good. So, you know, the, buying the collections is the way to go. 
Um, personally, there's different types of collections. Personally, I like to buy anything. I don't care what it is. Sometimes I buy collections as little as 100 bucks. Sometimes I buy collections as much as 20, 30,000, which are very rare. The average collection size that I probably buy is maybe around like one or two grand is usually the normal size. Um, it depends. And people say, well, Rudy, what do you pay? The normal size of the, the normal pricing I like to use for collection buying is going to be something like another company, like a Star City or ABU Games or DA Card World, you know, or a kind of, um, I don't even know. I'll just, you take one of the big boys, Troll and Toad, CCG House, Cool Stuff Inc., any of the big dogs that are well recognized, multiple locations, you know, 100 employees, massive overhead. I usually say, hey, if you're curious, put a whole list of your cards. If you want to know where Rudy's going to pay you, you take their buy list and you add another 10, 20% premium for coming to me. And I usually like to film it and meet you. We kind of make a whole fun thing with it. I like to make it more enjoyable because, again, we all get one shot in this world. And, you know, we're dealing with cardboard. we got to have fun with it. If you're not enjoying it, it's going to come through in your videos if you're doing a YouTube channel. Or it's going to come through in your magic buying and selling because you're just not happy. You have to want to do this stuff. So, you know, three nights a week on average, I'm probably buying some good-sized collections. So, I mean... That's, you know, three out of seven days a week where I'm here doing that, that, that's pretty good. That's kind of what, my goal was around four, four nights a week of meeting and buying and doing things like that. So I'm pretty happy with it overall. I don't think I'm really going to change that direction anytime soon. Um, I have, I get a lot of people that are, you know, asking, you know, can I come play? And I've had a few people come and just kind of sit and play and do things while I, because I'm going to be here anyways, buying collection, negotiating, and five, six, seven people show up and do that. That's fine. No big deal. They buy some little things here and there. They buy a few packs. They buy some cards or singles or, you know, accessories or sleeves or whatever. I don't really care. You know, that stuff is fine. And that's just basic kind of, some people call it the bread and butter of card stores and hobby stores. Personally, that's not really important to me. I mean, I like meeting the people and the stories and filming it and kind of stuff. I'm going to start slipping little videos inside other videos and merging them. So you'll see some little transactions here and there. But a lot of the people don't want to be filmed. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, even the GP Vegas, there's some people in the videos, they didn't want to be in the video. So I can't use it, you know? Other times, I just try to film the cards, but I don't show their face. So, you know, we do run into things like that for, you know, they may have personal reasons. They may have legal reasons. They may have ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, marital reasons. Or they're just, maybe they just don't want to be on the internet on an idiot like me's channel. All are perfectly fine. I can't really get mad at anybody for stuff like that. So, to jump into the next thing. Um, so that's it for the hours. So, you know, if you really want to kind of meet me or do a transaction or large thing locally, again, just send me an email or a private thing, go to YouTube and you can send me private messages or contact for business inquiries. And if it's something, you know, and then when I have somebody kind of scan through those massive amount of messages, you know, anything particular or meeting in business, we kind of follow up on, you know, I apologize. We can't go through, you know, we get so many messages and emails a day. And I appreciate, I, I try to read as much as I can. And some of you guys send me these really crazy stories. And they're very interesting, and you know, but they're very long. And unfortunately, you know, I would like to reply and talk and meet everybody. But at the end of the day, if I do that, you guys won't see any videos. I won't be filming because I'm going to be doing that. And at the end of the day, I, I don't, you know, not to make it sound bad, but I don't want to reply to make that one person happy. When 90,000 subscribers, I think we just broke 90,000. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, you guys. I got a special video coming for 100K. But, you know, I have 90,000 people that want to see a video. So I don't want to say that the little guy doesn't matter. But if I spend my time replying to one person, I can't make a video for 90,000 people. So that's kind of what's torn with. And it is what it is. It, it's kind of something crappy. Because some of the emails I skim through and read are really interesting. But I just don't have the ability to go through them and reply and dig into some of these stories. So I just hope you guys understand that. Um, so back to the financial side of the card store. So this location has worked out. Actually, it's been better than I thought it would be. Straightforward with you guys. Again, let's let's go to some raw numbers. I pay $1,367.07 a month for overhead here. Okay, because I'm only here a couple days a week and we're not here, we're not open all day every day. And because I designed it where there's not a lot of windows and outside light for heat in Florida, my utility bill is literally like $80 a month. It's super cheap. And then when the winter hits here in Florida, which is only a couple months out of the year, and the temperature stays between 30 and 70 degrees, I'm going to literally, in this location, will pretty much hold the temperature where it is. You know, my utility bill will probably drop to $40 a month. 
So at thirteen sixty seven overhead plus fifty bucks in utilities, my total cost on just utilities and overhead is like fourteen thirty a month. It's extremely low. So for me to use that as an expansion of storage for non member, and I know you guys already know this, I use this location for non high dollar items. So everything you know, I'm not going to be storing PSA ten and graded alphas and per, you know complete sets of you know Arabian Nights and Legends Antiquity. There's nothing like that at this location. It's mostly a bunch of heavy mass, larger items that are just basically in print items and just basic cost value items. These aren't high dollar things. You know, cases that are worth 50 bucks, 100, couple hundred here and there. You know, maybe a few loose packs are worth some money, but we're not talking hundreds of thousands and big money is located here. It just isn't. So, I mean, mostly because, again, this is a public location for security reasons. We've got a lot of security, security system cameras and, you know, metal gates and everything secure and everything and cameras and recording, but... End of the day, it's still a public location. I'm not going to store seven figures worth of magic or high-end rare collectibles in this location. So, but I do have people who want to buy or sell that stuff, and then I bring it in on those times. And of course, you know, we do a kind of a we discuss it and buy or sell the, the high-end product that leaves this location. So, you know, like I said, this thing you guys hear this thing squeaking? I think like I'm going to break the chair. God, I didn't do it. Oh, all right. So I hope that adds some clarity to kind of some questions for this location and why Rudy's been running it the way he is and why isn't he open all day every day? Because again, you know, I've told you guys from the beginning, making the real money in this industry is not being open all day every day. And unfortunately, you know, I declined to do the WPN program with Wizards of the Coast. It's just not something I feel is worthwhile. Now if things shift in the future, I will gladly be a part of it. I will gladly make sure I'm open every Friday night for FNM. I will gladly take that route. And I will gladly report the you know results and the people and the DCI. And I don't mind doing that. Hopefully your system works. If anybody at Wizards watches my channel, and I'm sure, you know, I'm all banned at Wizards and nobody likes me, but I've never talked to anybody at Wizards. I don't know. Anyway, so, you know, if that's the case, whatever. But, you know, until then, I, I just don't, there's just not really a benefit for me to do that kind of approach and, Make sure I hire and I come in on Friday night and I bring a second person and we run it. And it's just at this point in time, it's just, it, there's no reward for it in my eyes. So that's kind of how I see it. So for all you guys watching, I do want to comment. Remember, what you see on this channel and this card shop life type thing I've done is a result of somebody who's kind of backed into it. I've built an online presence, an empire. I've made money from the other locations I have a passive interest in. I have food service business and other things and other locations that deal in hobbies and collectibles that I have part ownership and different things along those lines where I, I was able to get into it earlier and now I've just added an extra location, you know, and that's kind of something that's worked for me. So at the other locations, yeah, they have people and there's there and they're open normal hours. Here, it's not. That's not the point of it. So between the buying collections, being able to film and have good conversations and have good to show you guys product and discuss things. For the overhead being $14.40 a month, and for me to move a lot of product and be able to store more product and to be able to discuss and show things and meet people and do some more filming as a YouTube studio, as more logistics, and as to buy and sell product, you know, it, it's worked. It's worked as a good hobby store for me and my location and what I'm trying to do. So that's all I have to say. I, I feel this kind of, we need to do a basic card shop like this because I haven't done it in a long time. And I feel it's been slacking because, you know, well, it's, it's taking a step back. When you're buying and selling booster boxes, if I put them on eBay like other stores do, you make a couple of dollars. And that's not really where the money is. You know, single cards, the secondary market is where the money is and where card stores and LGSs make their living and pay their employees. You know, that's why I do a, a mass amount of eBay. And then, of course, I have the online presence and social media and the Patreon and YouTube and everything involved. So, you know, it's, it's worked for me. And my grand presence, like I told you guys originally, this location has a four-year lease. 3.8 years now. And, you know, I don't plan on renewing that lease at this location. Because at that point in time, I should be ready to expand into my final official, what the original intent was. Which would be to actually build a high-end custom location that is going to that I want to blow people's minds with that is the idea and I'm hoping to be able to have the capital and everything lined up in the four years from today and based on the direction of YouTube and the growth and the sales and everything I should be able to hit that target 
But to make it very simple, to give you guys an idea of what I want to do, I mean, I'm talking, I want like five to 10,000 square feet. And literally, you like, like dress code, like wood floors, fancy lighting, like a high end, like unlike anything that's been done before. And have kind of something like that with also a high security back area for high end transactions and high end goods and collectibles. I want to raise it to a whole other level that's never been done. So that is something that I really want to do, and that requires pretty much like a million dollar build out the expansion just for the facility, not including inventory. So I need to get to like a million dollars type thing, and I'm not anywhere near there in free cash flow that I can just take all that and just dump it into there. I'm not quite there. Um, I have a lot of work to do to get there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of rudy discussion. It's very different. Um, like I said, I haven't been doing a lot of that with the card store and the card shop. And tell me what you guys think in the comments section if you're still watching. I don't know how long this video is. Maybe five. Typical Rudy 10-minute video. I feel like I've been talking a while. But, I've, you know, it's been lacking. And if you guys like this kind of discussion, you want some more videos of the card shop life, say, Rudy, you know, I like it. You've been missing. Or, Rudy, no, no, no. Go back to showing more content and different things that come and go. Because, like I said, I've got some new cases of Pokemon. I've got new products that came in, new singles, some stuff over here you guys can't see. That's not going to be in this video, so I, you know, I, I kind of scrapped all that in some new fan mail to have a good discussion on kind of a recap of the card shop video since it's been about probably four to six weeks since we've really had a discussion about what's going on with the overall direction of this. So tell me what y'all think. Give me some feedback. Rudy with Alpha Investments. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I like doing this. I like having a good analytical discussion. So that's all I have. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off. You guys have a fantastic day. Thank you for all the support. I'm so proud to be at 90,000 subscribers. 90,000 people have clicked subscribe to watch me on this channel. I hope, you, I hope I'm able to deliver and you guys are able to enjoy it. I really appreciate everything. You guys have a great day.